Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. Okay, I want to make this short little video to talk a little bit about our use of arrows when talking about organic chemistry because we have many different kinds of arrows that indicate and signify very different things. So it's important to use the right kind of arrows for the specific tasks that you're trying to convey, the specific concepts you're trying to convey. Uh, so on this slide what I've shown you is that there are uh, different kinds of arrows when we're talking about a reaction. So when molecule A gets con changed or transformed into molecule B, we have a reaction arrow that starts on the left and points to the right. So that in indicates that A is being transformed into B or some reaction is taking place. If that reaction is reversible, B can go back to A, then we usually use two arrows each pointed in different directions, what we refer to as equilibrium arrows, which you can see in the second example here. A goes to B, B goes back to A, so we have two arrows pointing in opposite directions. That refers to an equilibrium happening. The point is that both A and B exist and they're interconverting back and forth. Now we just got done talking about the concept of resonance where we're talking about electronic states of the molecule and trying to draw extremes of what actually exists in between. So a resonance arrow is a single line with a head arrowhead at both ends. That's what we refer to as a resonance arrow and it indicates that A and B are resonance structures and that neither of them alone exists on their own, that what actually exists is something in between, a combination of those two extreme structures on either end. When we talk about reactions, we also use arrows to indicate electron flow, what we refer to as curved arrows, and you've seen me use this a little bit already. So if we think about uh, a couple of reactions here, uh, we can do a couple of things. So if we look at this fictitious molecule AB with a covalent bond in between and the reaction of that where the bond breaks. That bond could break in two different ways. We could break this bond which contains two electrons in such a way that both of those electrons remain with one atom. So you notice the product B has both of those electrons that I've indicated by the lone pair there and a negative charge. A was left deficient so we have a plus charge. So when I am to describe this using arrows, I would take uh, my pencil and I would draw the bond, electrons from the bond pointing to B. The electrons moved or flowed to B. So B kept both of those arrows, or both of those electrons. In another example, let's say we broke this covalent bond between A and B in a homolytic fashion. That is, one electron went to A and one electron went to B. Both of those are neutral species but with unpaired electrons. The way I would draw this to indicate only one electron flowing is from the bond I would draw an arrow towards B with half of an arrowhead. That indicates one electron. And uh, another curved arrow to B showing the other electron, half an electron. So that indicates that there's a homolytic cleavage where one electron stays with A and one electron stays with B. Again, a two-headed arrow like I showed above indicates two electrons have moved in the direction of that curved arrow that you have drawn. So that's a little bit about curved arrows. Please be cognizant of how you're using arrows throughout this semester in organic chemistry.